So Bernie Sanders spoke at MoveOn.org, and uh, the idea behind the speech is to tell everybody one big idea that you have. And, uh, you know, Bernie could have went in a number of directions for this speech. There are a lot of big ideas that he has, relatively speaking, for the U.S. political system. Um, In reality, he's just kind of like a mild social Democrat, but in Washington, D.C., they try to paint you as like, just an insane, super far lefty who has these ideas that are unproven, even though quite literally all of his ideas are proven because they're just following the rest of the developed world. Uh, But I digress from that. It's interesting to see what topic he picked. Take a look. All of you know there are many enormously important issues, including the need for Medicare for all, for giving student debt and making public colleges and universities tuition free, raising the minimum wage, criminal justice reform, immigration reform, and addressing the global crisis of climate change, among other issues. But there is one issue out there that does not get the attention that it deserves a very big idea, and that is the need to stop endless wars and to bring to bring the world together to find diplomatic solutions to international conflict. Today, we are preparing to send soldiers to Afghanistan who were not even born on September 11, 2001. We have spent $5 trillion on the wars that have taken place since, not just in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen, a horrific war. And now we have some of the same people that got us into the war in Iraq trying to start a military conflict with Iran. We have got to stop endless wars. We have got to cut military spending. Now, recently, Recently, I have been attacked because of my opposition to unnecessary wars. I make no apologies as a young man for opposing the war in Vietnam. I make no apologies as a congressman for doing everything that I could to prevent the disastrous war in Iraq. And I am proud right now to have led the effort to get the United States out of an unauthorized, unconstitutional war in Yemen. And let me be absolutely clear, with the Trump administration proposing to send 10,000 troops to confront Iran, I will do everything in my power to stop a war with Iran. It is time to bring our troops home from Afghanistan and Iraq. It is time for Congress to assert its constitutional prerogative and repeal the 2001 and 2002 authorizations that have been used as a blank check to send U.S. troops into harm's way. But it is not enough to just end military interventions. It is time to end the entire policy of endless wars. Using war and militarism as the first and only foreign policy tool has undermined the United States' moral authority, caused allies to question our ability to lead, drained our treasury, and corroded our own democracy. When we end endless wars, we can finally begin to ask ourselves, how do we move toward a global community in which people have decent jobs, adequate food, clean water, education, health care, and the housing that they need? That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, uh, when you ask Bernie, one of the things he says is, okay, here's a screw-up we had in 2016. We didn't focus enough on the issue of foreign policy, and we should have focused more on foreign policy. And he almost seemed like a little hesitant 
to argue with Hillary Clinton on her grounds and on her terms because remember Hillary was Secretary of State, so the media just kept like repeatedly fawning over her prowess on foreign policy issues. But of course, what they don't tell you is that she has a lot of experience because she got every major decision wrong. <laughs> she pushed for regime change in Libya. Um, she obviously voted for the Iraq war. She's flat out a hawk. She's a hawk. And even though she's been in that game for a long time, that doesn't mean she's correct. That's not a substitute for accuracy. So um, I think that Perhaps he was a little bit squeamish when he shouldn't have been, and he could have attacked her on that issue, and he could have made it a bigger issue, and it appears like he definitely learned his lesson from 2016, and he's like, yeah, no, forget it, I'm gonna go all out on the non-interventionism uh, in this election, and I think that's gonna help, and I think that's gonna be a good thing. And remember, this was a speech where you're supposed to talk about one big idea. He chose this over all other issues. That's huge, man. And it's it's also intelligent because you, you can link two really important issues together in one fell swoop. And that, of course, is, hey, if we stop doing all these stupid, offensive regime change wars, well, then what we could do is take that money and invest here at home and do, for example, a giant infrastructure deal where we can move down the path of renewable and green technology, and we could do a Green New Deal where we create millions of jobs um, and we rebuild our infrastructure and everybody wins. Everybody wins because we change our infrastructure from a grade of D+, plus, which is what it currently is. Let's make that an A. Let's do a giant investment here. There's a jobs program attached where you get millions of uh, good paying jobs. And also, we now uh, become moral again and we're not doing offensive wars anymore. This is wonderful. It's politically dumb to think like, oh, if I make the case for hawkishness, it's going to help me. And um, now Bernie seems to get that lesson. He never made the case for hawkishness. He was always um, at least mildly non-interventionist. But now he's like putting it front and center. And he's saying, no, I'm going to plant a flag here. And also... You got to give props to Tulsi Gabbard because Tulsi Gabbard, you know, I don't know exactly what went on in Bernie's head. I don't know what confluence of factors led him to make this decision to put this issue front and center. But, uh, you know, Tulsi's been out there for, for the longest time since she launched her campaign. And that is like her main issue. That's not saying she doesn't care about the other issues. She does. But it's clear that when you prioritize, this is number one to her. For sure. And she's gone out and she's been smeared relentlessly for it. Now, I don't know if Bernie sees the Tulsi arguments and goes, yeah, you know, I'm going to. OK, she moved me a little bit in the direction of, you know, making the arguments. I don't know if that's what happened, but either way, I support where they are now. And it's also wonderful that now you have two really strong non-interventionist voices and Make the point, make the point, make them defend their shitty beliefs. Could you imagine Bernie Sanders on a stage with Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders calling him out on arming Saudi Arabia repeatedly as they committed genocide in Yemen? Can you imagine Bernie calling out Trump to his face on his escalation with Iran? I mean, it would be, there is no response. He wouldn't have a response. He has to say, oh, you're crazy. You're crazy, Bernie. You're crazy by always focusing on policy substance and being correct. I have to tell you. Believe me. So, um, it's good news. There's nothing else to say about this other than uh, this is smart politics. This is smart policy. And this is what people love about Bernie Sanders. And I, I think this is where his heart of hearts is as well. You know, I don't think it's just a strategic thing. I think he actually is in favor of stopping the endless wars. So to vocalize that more than he did last time, because that was a main criticism from the left of him last time. There are people on the left who were saying, why don't you, like, I don't understand. You're not, you're, you hammer away on the domestic front. You hammer away on Medicare for all and corruption and, and free college and a living wage. But you, there's no, you're not hammering away enough on foreign policy. It's just more tepid. Well, now he's saying, nope, course correction, bitch. 
here we are. And I'm planting that flag, and I'm saying we're gonna stop the endless wars. And, oh, you disagree? By all means, try to make your case. And when they try to make the case, it'll be like this. Go ahead, try. <laughs> Let's see if Joe Biden can counter this effectively. There's no way he can counter it. There's nothing he could say in response to this that's gonna go over better with the public. So, um, great stuff from Bernie here. I like to see more of this moving forward. And um, the Overton window shifting, it might be slowly, but I don't even know if it's that slowly. The Overton window is definitely shifting. Medicare for All is now a litmus test for Democratic candidates. And we're going to get to a point where ending all the offensive regime change wars is a litmus test as well.